Welcome to the Build on Beauty podcast, where beauty is born skin deep. Now, here's your host, author, speaker, entrepreneur, Cornell Germain. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Build on Beauty podcast. I am your host, Cornell Germain. If you are a returning listener, I welcome you again. If you are new to the show, welcome, welcome, welcome. Listen, today we're going to talk about what the gurus never told you the truth about purpose. I wanted to talk about this episode because I think uh, this idea of purpose has become such a buzzword and a necessary one in our landscape today. Everyone's talking about your purpose, your purpose. What's your purpose? Find your purpose. Define your purpose. What's your purpose? So it's become this thing that is necessary for us to talk about, necessary for us to do. I want to just bring my perspective, my thought, uh, about what I feel about this thing called purpose. Um, I think this thing about purpose is one that we have to look look at closely. And I want to look at it first from the physical definition of what it means. Purpose means the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. I'll say it again. Purpose is the reason. It's defined as the reason for which something is done or created, or for which something exists. I want to take the last clause of that definition. The reason for which something is created, or for which something exists. I wanted to highlight that particular uh, phrase of the definition because I think it's so necessary to understand in our conversation right now. When we talk about purpose, we have to now first realize that purpose is, by definition, the reason for which something is created and for which something exists. So if we're going to talk about purpose and defining our purpose as an individual, now I'm talking about purpose as an individual, because sometimes it's easy to define purpose when you're trying to build your business and you're selling cakes and pies and you're building your, 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 your law firm or whatever business or industry you're in. It's easy sometimes to define the purpose because you define it based on the skill set or the work that, that, that you do in that particular industry. But when it comes to defining your purpose as an individual, sometimes it can be a challenging thing. Think of purpose. We have to look at it from the framework of it is a reason why something is created, why something exists. And if we're going to define purpose, we have to now go to the one who created us. And that's where I think we mess up or that's where I think we kind of error when it comes to trying to define our purpose. It's going to be very challenging for an individual to define their purpose if they have not tapped into the one or the individual from which they are, were created. The best way to get instructions on how to use a said ma- a material, a said device, a said machine is to go to the owner's manual. What did the owner, what did the creator, what did the manufacturer say as it pertains to the purpose for this particular machine, the purpose for this device, the purpose for this whatever that it is that you're using? So if we're going to first define our purpose, we're going to have to go to the creator, the one who created us. Now, I realize that that takes us down a rabbit trail of, of, of it, that opens up a much bigger conversation, but a necessary one if you're going to really define purpose. Now, I'm not saying that you have to believe in who I believe in or you have to believe it like this one believes. You just have to believe in something and you have to believe in a higher power that now can give you a, a glimpse into who you are and why you exist. Why you exist. And I have to respect that as an individual. I can't come and tell you that you exist for this purpose when you have defined your purpose based on who, based on the entity that you worship and the entity that you feel created you. You understand what I'm saying? So when we talk about purpose, you have to first find yourself within the owner's manual, within the manufacturer, within God's plan for your life. The second thing I think we have to realize is purpose is not talent. I think sometimes we, 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 we say, oh, if we see a talent in a, in a kid, oh, they can sing. Their purpose is to be a singer. Not necessarily. Their talent of singing may be the tool that the creator uses in order for them to fulfill their ultimate purpose. So sometimes we look at talent and skill sets and abilities as purpose. And most times I feel 
They are just entryways into God using us in a said way in order to, for us to fulfill the real purpose that he has for our life. And I say that from, from, from experience. So I have a skill set with my hands. I can, I, I can create with my hands very skillfully. My mind easily tells my hands what to do. And before you know it, I have something created. That's a gift that I have, but that's not my purpose. That's the, that's the way that the creator uses me in order to fulfill purpose. And I think if we look at it like that, it'll broaden our perspective on what purpose is and how we can define it. Because if you, if you define yourself your, the, or the purpose of your life from within the framework of a talent or a said skill set, in order to find fulfillment in your life, you'll have to perform that talent. You have to perform that skill set for the rest of your life. Because that's your purpose. And granted, that may be the purpose for some individuals. But from my vantage point, I, I think that is usually a tool that the creator uses, that God uses in order for that individual to either get entry into a said space that they're supposed to dominate in or to open up their world to the people from which they are really supposed to help so that they can now fulfill the greater purpose that they have in life. Thirdly, when it comes to purpose, now, first we said purpose, we, we must find purpose from, with, from our creator. That's the first step. So we can't find purpose outside of our creator. You can't find purpose outside. You can't find purpose by just sitting down and saying, oh, I want to achieve that. I want to do that. That's not purpose. That's just a goal. That's just a vision, which we talked about in previous episodes, which are great, which ultimately gives purpose its, its form, its identity in the earth. You get what I'm saying? That's what the vision does. That's what the goals do. They give purpose their identity, but they're not purpose in and of itself. So first, we have to get connected to our creator, go within, find that purpose. Secondly, we have to understand that your talents and skill set are not, not, not always necessarily your purpose in life. They are usually your, 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 your gateway or a tool that God uses in order for you to feel, fulfill purpose or to get you in the right environment so that you can dominate in said territory, et cetera, et cetera. Thirdly, I think that we have to understand, and this is where I really want to pin when it comes to what I feel the gurus do not tell you. And that is that purpose is ever evolving. Purpose is ever evolving. I think we often look at purpose as this one major thing, this one lofty goal, this one big thing that we're supposed to do in our life. You live, you live all these years and you have this one big mission that God has called you to do. And I think sometimes when we bite off that much, we, we look at this thing of purpose as such a grand thing that we really can't even wrap our minds around it. Because one, we're afraid of falsely identifying it. So you're identifying it as the wrong thing. And it's, oh, I thought I was supposed to do this and I'm really supposed to do that. Oh my God, I don't want to be. And now you're, you're, you're terrorizing yourself with the thought of just trying to define what your purpose is because you're afraid of making the wrong choice about your purpose <laughs> because you've looked at it as this one big thing that God has called you to do. Oh, I'm supposed to go to the nations. Oh, I'm supposed to take territories. Oh, I'm supposed to, all of that may be true and all of that will come to pass if that's what, what God's plan is for your life. But I think for an individual to make purpose more palatable for you, you have to understand that purpose is ever, ever evolving. So if you understand that purpose is ever evolving, and I, let me give you an example of why it's ever evolving, because what you do as a teenager in high school, your purpose is to get up on time, probably you know, make sure you wash your dishes, do your chores, go to school, get your good grades, come home, make sure you do your homework, go to bed and do it all over again the next day. That's your purpose. But if somebody tries to get you to see this big lofty purpose in high school, you're going to be like, well, what? You know what? You know, all you can see within your view is getting up, going to school, getting good grades and trying to get through that lecture in math class or in science class or whatever the class is that you hate the most. <laughs> That is your purpose for that set period of time. Now, as you matriculate through there and go now to college, graduate school, and on into a career, your purpose then will 
change again. So you, if you understand that purpose is ever evolving, now you can stand in assurance knowing that where you are right now is where you're supposed to be. And I think that's where we get so depressed and frustrated in life because we look at purpose as such a lofty thing and we see this big vision and where we're supposed to be in the long run. And we're trying to put ourselves in that space when we haven't even figured out how to get out of this one bedroom apartment. <laughs> Understand that. Understand that. So your purpose is ever evolving. So this is how I like to explain it to people. When it comes to you defining your purpose, after you've gotten connected to the creator, you've, you've developed a relationship where you can now find yourself within the space of who God is creating you to be. You've gotten that, you've gotten in touch. Okay. That's all that means. You've gotten in touch. Secondly, now you've understood that your talent, your purpose is bigger than your talent and your skill set. You know what I mean? Because there might come a day that you don't feel like singing no more. There might come a day that you don't feel like dancing no more or you, that you can't dance because your arthritis won't allow you. <laughs> I'm not speaking that over you, but I'm just saying sometimes it happens. Or you can't write another book because you just don't got no more ideas. You know, so if your purpose is just singing, dancing, writing, entertaining and, and, and doing X, Y and Z, you, you could grow tired of that because even the best, even the most talented people get tired of their craft. So if that is your purpose, then you've got to do that for the rest of your life in order to find fulfillment. But if your purpose is bigger than that, which I believe it is always bigger than that, then if you're not doing it, you can still find fulfillment. And not only that, you can, you can use that as a bridge. We talked about bridges and boxes as a bridge to take you to what your real purpose is and find how you can develop that even more. But the third phase is we must understand that purpose is ever evolving. And if it's, it's, ev it's ever evolving, why? Because you're ever evolving. So this is how you, I find footing in this, in this philosophy. I believe if you know that God has called you and created you for a purpose and you have been, because if you're existing, there is a purpose because there is nothing that exists that has no purpose. There is a purpose. So that's the first thing that you have to accept because some people have gotten to the place where they feel like they don't have a purpose. So the first thing you have to accept before you even go through any of the steps that I'm speaking of is you have to identify that, yes, I have a purpose. I don't care what they told you. I don't care who's broken your spirit and who's tried to tell you otherwise. You have a purpose. And that's the first thing you must accept. Then you connect with God in order to try to find that purpose. And then you realize that the purpose is bigger than just your skill set. Now you find that your purpose is ever evolving and how you find your footing in this philosophy is instead of trying to define your, this, your purpose from this grand scale right off the bat, because that's going to take some maturity, that's going to take some development, that's going to take some time. If you allow the time and you're willing to mature and allow the development to take place, then this is really what the purpose is. And this is how I, I think of it. I feel like your purpose is wherever God is speaking to you, dealing with you, directing you, encouraging you to do or go or be in this moment. Now, it may not be your divine destiny, but if God is pushing you, showing you, admonishing you to do, go, connect, be, whatever, with whomever, if God is doing that, that means there is a purpose. There's an underlying purpose there. Now, that purpose may be for a season, but I guarantee you that the purpose is ultimately supporting and building the foundation for the greater purpose that he has for your life. Did you catch that? If you can just take a moment and, and, and tune in with where God is telling you, encouraging you, trying to place you, put you right now. And I mean like right now, as opposed to trying to look at it from this grand big picture type view, where is he telling you to go right now? What is he telling you to do right now? When you were in high school, he, he, he told you through your parents, get good grades and you got good grades. And then you got to college and you got that scholarship not knowing that you were going to need that scholarship because you were going to get 
inspired to go and become a medical doctor. And then now you're in graduate school and now you're in grad and getting your doctorate degree in medicine. And now all of a sudden you're helping people heal. You're helping them find wholeness. You're helping them find the, the, the divine within the medical field. You found your purpose. But all it started with was getting those good grades in math and science back in high school. You understand what I'm saying? So stop putting so much pressure on yourself to define your purpose right now. Now, I get it. Some of us are in, may you, some of you may be in that space where you feel like you're getting older in life and you want to, you're in a hurry to try to find it. Could it, could it be that you've found it already and you just haven't identified it because you're looking in the wrong space? You're looking at it through the lens of what can I do? What do I know how to do? Because we, so for some reason in our society, when we think of purpose or we think of, 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 of somebody who has um, uh, 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 some sense of value, we automatically go to a celebrity of sort. <laughs> if you don't sing, if you don't dance, or, or some kind of uh, uh, arts or some type of skill set that we can, we can measure and we can uh, quantify, then you're not necess- you don't have a purpose or you don't have a talent. And ultimately, if I don't have a talent, then all I'm supposed to do is just work here in the back office and make sure uh, Mr. get his paperwork and make sure we get these files ran. And that could be your purpose. That could be your purpose. You could have a purpose to be a supporting ministry of helps to the marketplace. But if you feel like it's not your purpose and you feel like your purpose is bigger, then that means going back to the point I made, identifying where God is, what, what God has put in your spirit and what he's telling you and how he's pushing you in right now. If he's put that in your spirit and you feel like there's more than you just filing paperwork and you just pushing papers in the back office and helping so-and-so build their business and helping them make more money while you just make whatever, whatever, there is probably something more that he wants for you to do. So the pressure comes in finding that more. What do you feel? What do you feel? What do you feel you're called? What are you feeling? What are you feeling, God? And I'm I'm asking you right now in the moment. And I want you to think of this right now. (laughs) What do you feel God calling you to in this moment? Don't, Don't identify it through your work. Don't identify it through your family. Don't identify it through a talent or skill, unless that is what you feel. What do you feel God calling you to? What do you feel? What are you feeling led to do more of in this season? Identify that. Then take a closer look at what that is. Get involved in that, whatever it may be. And as you're getting involved in whatever that is, I guarantee you that God is going to lead you to the next step, which will lead you to the next step, which will lead you to the next. And ultimately, you'll end up bumping right into your purpose, the purpose for which he created you. Identify where he wants you right now. And if you can't figure it out, take some time. No pressure. No pressure. Take some time, search your spirit, listen to those around you. What do your, what do your best friends tell you about who you and who you are? How do they say you make them feel when they're around you? All of these questions, all of these experiences, all of these encounters can lead you to your purpose, but feel it in your gut right in the moment. What is that pressure? What is that pressure point in your gut right now? Get involved with that. Attack that. As opposed to trying to define it in this grand way. Attack that little nudge in your spirit and allow that nudge to push you right into your destiny. This has been the Build on Beauty podcast where beauty is born skin deep. I'm your host, Cornell Germain. Until next time, let your soul be made whole. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Build on Beauty podcast. For more information about our host, please visit CornellGermain.com.